Identifying the cause of AKI is the foremost step toward treating the patient. Careful history taking, physical examination combined with appropriate laboratory investigations help in narrowing down the cause of AKI. Lab investigations include urine tests, blood tests, renal biopsy. Let us now discuss these investigations individually. Urine tests, the measurements of urine osmolality, electrolytes, and creatinine concentration are simple and useful in differentiating between ATN and prerenal azotemia. Urine-specific gravity can be measured. A high urine-specific gravity generally correlates with the concentrated urine and is expected in prerenal azotemia. Dipstick tests determines whether the urine contains protein or hemipigments. Benz Jones protein test should be done. The presence of RBC CAS distinguishes the hematuria associated with glomerulonephritis from that of postrenal or urologic causes. Crystal urea occurs in the obstruction due to renal calculi or medications. The fractional excretion of sodium indicates the degree of renal sodium avidity, which generally reflects renal perfusion. A value of less than 1% indicates prerenal lecitomia. Blood tests. Measurement of the BUN and creatinine is necessary to identify and monitor AKI. The ratio of BUN to creatinine with a value more than 20 is to 1 may indicate prerenal acetomia. Serial blood chemistries will help identify acid base and electrolyte disturbances. Anemia may suggest underlying CKD. Eosinophilia frequently accompanies AIM. The presence of anti-nuclear antibodies is consistent with autoimmune nephropathy, such as lupus nephritis or scleroderma, both of which may cause AKI. The serum protein electrophoresis aids in the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Estimates of GFR may be helpful in assessing the severity of AKI, as well as for adjusting medication dosages. The formulas for estimating GFR have been discussed in the following chapters. Renal biopsy is done for patients suspected to have parenchymal renal disease. Renal biopsy should be considered when there is a recent onset of esotemia with an unknown cause. There is a possibility that the patient has a renal disease that may require drug treatment. For example, steroids or cytotoxic drugs for patients with probable glomerulonephritis, vasculitis, or AIM. There is a presence of heavy proteinuria or nephrotic syndrome. A biopsy can be done for prognosis. In the next few slides, we will cover the detection and diagnosis of AKIs. Accessible markers of AKI can be components of serum or urine, imaging studies, or any other quantifiable parameter. The urine yields the most promising markers for the early detection of AKI, and additional characterization will qualify these markers as useful tools for the earlier diagnosis identification of mechanism of injury, assessment of sight, and severity of injury. Expectantly, one or more of these biomarkers, either individually or in combination, will prove to be beneficial in facilitating early diagnosis, guiding targeted intervention, and monitoring disease progression and resolution. Acute renal failure is a progressively common and devastating complication in hospitalized patients. The current diagnostic tests for AKI include serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen. These two biomarkers were identified and incorporated into clinical practice several decades ago. It is now widely appreciated that serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen are suboptimal markers for AKI, and that more sensitive, specific, and early biomarkers are needed. This review sets out to cover recent developments in the field of AKI biomarkers validation in clinical studies. We will now learn about the management of AKIs.